Hello everybody, in this tutorial we're going to look at how to do a Fisher's exact test in SPSS. I'm assuming you're looking at a data view and you've got your data arranged in columns like this. Data here is from a fake study that looks at the kind of phones that people own and whether or not they are a hipster. So you've got phone type here, iPhone or Android, and you've got hipster status here. Now both these variables are dichotomous nominal variables. They are categories to which you either belong or don't, and each have two values. We're interested in whether the variables are independent of each other. In other words, is there any relationship between the type of phone you own and whether you're a hipster? The chi-square test is the normal way you test for the independence of nominal variables, but there's a problem here. We only have 10 people in our sample, and the chi-squared test requires that you have a count of at least five in each of the cross-tab table cells. This means that in this situation, we're best off using the Fisher exact test. To perform the Fisher exact test, go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Cross-tabs. If you've done a chi-squared test in SPSS, you might recognize this dialog box. You've got to get each of these variables over here, one in the rows box, the other in the columns box. So I'm doing it by dragging and dropping. Once you've done that, you've got to set up the chi-square test because the Fisher exact test is a variation on the chi-square test. So we set it up by hitting statistics and then chi-square. It's also worth hitting phi and Kramer's V in case you want a measure of effect size. Now press continue. And now we've got to set up the Fisher test. So press exact and then choose exact down here. Leave the time limit as five minutes. That won't be relevant for such a small sample size. Press continue. OK, we're now set. Let's run the Fisher exact test. Press OK. So here's our result. Now, the first thing to do is to look at the cross tabs table. You can see here we have five iPhone owners, all of whom are hipsters. We have five Android owners, four of whom are not hipsters, only one of whom is a hipster. This suggests that iPhone owners are more likely to be hipsters than Android owners. In other words, it looks like our variables might be related. To see whether this is the case, we've got to look at the result of our chi-square tests. You can see here we have the standard chi-square test and we have Fisher's exact test. If we look at the result of the standard chi-square test, you can see that it easily reaches significance. If we were using that test, we would be led to reject the null hypothesis, which holds that the two variables are independent of each other. However, down here, you can see there's a warning. Four cells have expected count less than five. The minimum expected count is two. Well, we have a count of one here, so clearly we can't use the standard Pearson chi-square test. We need to use the Fisher's exact test result. As it happens, we've also got a significant result for Fisher's exact test. The p-value is 0 0.048, which is less than the standard alpha value of 0 0.05. Therefore, we are still justified in rejecting the null hypothesis that holds that the two variables are unrelated. In other words, it seems like our variables of phone ownership and hipster status are dependent variables. They are related to each other. Basically, it's more likely that somebody will be a hipster if they own an iPhone rather than if they own an Android, which of course we'll all agree is true. Okay, so we know these two variables are related to each other. We don't yet know how strong the association is though. That's why we selected phi and Kramer's V as measures of effect size. So if we scroll down here, we can see that we've got a value of 0.816 for those measures. That represents a very strong association. So if this were a true study, it would show that hipsters very much prefer iPhones. It's not a true study, of course, which is a shame, but there you go. OK, that's it for this tutorial. You should now have a good idea of how to do a Fisher's exact test in SPSS. Please like and subscribe if you found this useful, and check out easyspss.com for more SPSS tutorials.